Okay, now, okay. Vehicles will try to behave. I mean, I'm sure in a couple of weeks I'll still be able to get up to this point, but then it'll go, nope, can't connect. Mm -hmm. Find that game, please, if one exists. First of all, I have no idea if anyone's actually going to join in, so... Dead air! Hooray! I guess I could go over each of the different pros. I think I'll start with the ones that were in the original game, and then branch out from there. So, the Assault... <coughs> was... Basically, a relatively high mobility, high damage glass cannon. And that he can engage anyone, anything at any time, but he can't really take a hit very well. And he can fly is, fly is more of a hover. Although I think leveling it up improves his jump height, so. And the charge just plows into whatever's in front of him, shoulder first. And in the original game, at its maximum level, it would also uh, end with a grapple throw. But they moved that to his grenade launcher in this. And the bomb, you know, just first damage shot. In a small area, sets non-bots on fire. Whatever you head crab, you're gonna take bonus damage. Pretty much a bread and butter kind of guy. Assassin, who I feel has one of the best EF2 hat unlocks, like period, the triclops. <laughs> She, her primary is actually a melee, and her secondary is range, kind of like what a veteran had. The shurikens will bounce around off the walls a few times if they don't hit anything to damage. But her most, her main damage is with her dagger, which, when she maxes out her offense, upgrades into a sword, and she can double grapple. She can, you know. Grapple with her blade weapon, and then grapple with her shuriken. She's got cloak, which makes so that bots and turrets ignore her. Players can still see a faint image of her, though, so it's very much not foolproof. Smoke bomb, which does stun the bots and turrets, and will briefly blind players and leap which in the original game was connected to the smoke bomb where you jumped at the same time you use the smoke bomb I was super buggy so they just made it its own separate ability Bas pretty self-explanatory take a giant jump in the air so he's next gunner Mini guns. All that heavy weapons. Pretty slow too. Uh, the slam will stun bots and turrets, knock back and damage enemy pro. And if you land directly on top of someone, if they're low enough health, it'll just be an instant kill. Pancaked. 
Uh, Rocket is something that is not in the original game. Because in this one, it just gives him a mid range burst capability. And then his deploy lets him well, turn himself into a 180 degree player controlled turret with boosted accuracy and critical hit rate. Well, it's a little bit of damage resistance, resistance, I think. Or no, it's armor that he gains while he's deployed. And he's also headshot immune when it's active. And his uh, other weapon, which you can't see, is a mortar, which actually splits into two shots and then three shots it, uh, after brief amount of time in the air so he can do a lot of damage to bots and turrets at medium to long range. Let's see here. Tank. One of my favorites. He is well tank. Biggest base health pool. Pretty nasty in close range. The original game, instead of the shield that he has in this, he had to deploy like the gunners. Fortunately, it wasn't really useful for him other than giving him briefly accelerated healing, which is kind of still not good because how quick it was to get taken out in that game. But, you know, the shield just puts up a shield between you and either a turret or a player that tracks whichever thing you wound up targeting with it. it basically just puts itself in between you and them until it either times out or it dies. Charge, like you know, assault charge, just plows right into things. You can actually knock things back a bit, I think, when it's leveled up some. You can I think it does more damage too. And the product grenade. Uh, it's one of the more unique things. Uh, at its base level, it actually just does a little damage, but as you upgrade it, it throws a smattering of banner ads spinning all over your screen. And it has Mickey go. <laughs> for a couple of seconds until it fades off at its maximum level. It also deploys cluster grenade after the initial impact. His main weapon, which you see him holding, is a jet engine, which you can use to deal a cone of damage in front of him, as well as alternate fire lets him Spin around for burst damage in close range. The set pros on fire, but not bots. And then it's secondary uh, is a railgun, which eh, is good to medium range. It's what you use for when things are outside of your jet gun's attack range. And that's about it. I mean, yeah, you can grapple with it. A bit awkward though, since it's a uh, rain mid-range weapon and support he's hacking into the turret now oh wait he can't do that in this game which, ha which incidentally is one of his uh, taunts <clears throat> what the heck uh, what he's holding right there hurt and heal gun primary fire heals allied Bots and players and internal cross turrets. Uh, right click just slows and drains the health of a target, absorbing a bit of it. But they balanced it by having it have a forced reload after so much time. In addition, whatever you Hurt beam, your fire base will try and attack as well if it's in within range. 
but uh, a way to get your fire base to focus fire on something if you really need to is uh, other weapons a shotgun big burst damage but it falls off quick but combos really well with a grapple so useful for dealing with guys like assassins that try and sneak up on your back airstrike basically places a marker on the field and artillery strike comes in from above and if there's a roof above wherever it is it's not gonna hit them so it's situational and overclock just gives support a temporary speed boost fire base a temporary range boost and makes his skills cool down much faster for a couple of seconds So that was the original crew. Yeah, I wasn't in like early beta, but let's see who was I believe veteran was the next newest guy. Grapple specialist. I mean, he's got his claw, which is a you know, typical hook. Throw it out. It snags a pro. He winks him in close. Retrains a charging skill that ends in a body slam. And the skid the bro throw is where he gives him a mean uppercut and then dive kicks him away. And those are his skills. His uh, weapons. Wait, he's wielding, the, you can see, he's actually his... You know, it is technically his primary weapon because it's alternate fire does a tiny slam. Kind of like the gunners. A lot weaker, but it's there. And eagles are his way of going, Hey, I can't hit you. I can't punch you. Eat America. Grr. And they haul me in a little bit. You normally get three of them, but with a certain amount of magazine size increase, you can be a fourth one. It's like 17.5% or something. No idea how that works out, but it does. And his other weapon is a bar stool covered in spikes. <laughs> And of course, he slams people's face into it. So, oh, nice. But then again, he's not from the old school. He's from the school they burnt down to build the old school. Let's see. All oh, right, sniper. I completely forgot about him. He was part of the original cast too. How did I forget about him? He's pretty simple. But he's also pretty fragile. Uh, with upgrades to his offenses, uh, scoped shots can actually penetrate full targets. So he can actually clear lanes pretty well. Uh, sniper grapple is basically an emergency grapple if uh, something gets in, up in his face. The traps. Yeah, like. In their initial level, they just cause a small area slow. As they level up, though, they'll become an outright free, or, well, technically a root. Where whoever gets caught in it can't jump or move around. They can still use skills, but. <sighs> Basically, makes them. Easy shot, easy headshots if you can uh, make use of them. And the flag is just area denial damage for a couple of seconds. And his secondary is a submachine gun. Yeah, he, he's pretty simple and straightforward. Anyway, the reason why I was reminded of him is his predecessor, Gunslinger who was one of 
I believe is basically when they started going, hey, we're going to start giving our guys names, maybe? Uh, she uses a repeater rifle as opposed to a scope sniper rifle. But she still does pretty good damage. I uh, uh, Blitz mode I did a couple weeks ago and we had Gunslinger that was actually just taking out booties in like three shots. Yeah, Trigger Happy doubles her DPS by doubling her rate of fire. Kneecap will slow and like ripple sort of the target. At close-ish medium range. And gun flurry is sort of like sniper's flex, just area denial as a cone directly in front of her for a couple seconds. And He's got a revolver as a sidearm. And I think Justin is when they went, hey, we're gonna give our guys actual names as opposed to just a generic class. Um, he wields a Tommy gun which has insane uh, Accuracy loss and radical bloom as it fires you have to burst with it if you're not basically on top of whatever you're trying to shoot And if you're on top of your where you're trying to shoot you're better off Breaking out his walking stick and smashing things in the face with it Anyway, he does have a, an exploding barrel which will roll on ground until it hits something falls off the stage and lights pros on fire it's sort of a fairly good range of burst damage rampage is goes on all fours running around and everything right next to him takes damage for you know as long as he can sustain it and his roar is a speed and health boost to everyone within range, including himself. A lot like what uh, Khan does in Paladins. Let's see, who else was next? I know Carl was one of the earlier ones, too. He's actually got a bit of lore behind him. He's supposed to be an infiltrator from the elite class into the working class. But of course he doesn't act like the person at all. Uh, I saw him earlier before I had to do the restart. And that he's got a mid range blaster type gun that has an overload feature as well that'll send out a large pulse. And he's got mid range. Grenades, which bounce on impact before detonating, so they're kind of hard to use on moving targets. Short circuit, which is uh, range stun, which will affect him too if it, you use it point blank. Junior, which is uh, uh, airborne smart mine. And prop up, which gives him super jump for a moment, as well as uh, displacing any. All styles next to him. Let's see. The girl was also one of the earlier ones. Or, well, combat girl. Who is pit girl with combat oriented instead of going, I'm just going to work on the turrets. Uh, you, you've seen me play a fair amount. But, got. Uh, Multi-target heal beam, which is like the support's heal beam, but it's a lot weaker per target. Since you can get up to four, five targets, you can be stronger in groups. Uh, nail gun, which she uses for wanting to do actual damage or dealing with, uh, you know, commandos that sneak up on her. Uh, combat laser 
basically kind of having a three down straight through an area it's actually a lot like Genos is all only it doesn't pierce through walls Trying to make it easy to see me, you know, they're like the uh, supports firebase, we can stick them on any surface. And Fortify gives the kitties uh, attack, speed boost, range boost, and causes whoever's getting hit by them to be slowed. So she can actually make a really nasty defensive net if she's able to get enough combat kittens up. And I'm not sure which one of these came next. It's been so long. Uh, mascot. Like mascot, only with the W flipped upside down. Neville. <clears throat> uh, primary is a coin launcher. A, well, fake coin launcher. Fits out some coins that will detonate. On contact from an enemy trying to pick them up. And it can also spit out tofu bacon, which will temporarily slow whoever eats it. Coins do self detonate after a few seconds. And his other weapon is like a spanking paddle type thing. Basically, a lot like, like all the other melee weapons, swings it around and hurt things. And slap people silly. Rook Hook is an ability that lets him. It's a lot like Rover's Vine Paladins, where you can look at a piece of geometry, throw it over there, I know you yoink him back up. Although, if you manage to hit it on uh, Hostile directly, it will do a brief stun. Shifty Shuffle is a counter grapple attack. Grappling is frequently used against commandos like Wascott to root them in place and get teammates to damage them and take them out before they can get out of there. Shifty Shuffle. You know, there's a counter to that. When it's active, he'll have some life steal, and if someone decides to grab him, he's just gonna belly bump him away. And Party Pooper is a range accuracy and damage debuff, I think. Basically, anyone hit by it is gonna go like, huh, I can't hit what I'm aiming at now. Oops. Uh, Megabeth you can tell by the uh, TF2 soldier helmet specializes in rockets and rocket jumping and she's got they can be both dumb fired and uh, have a tracking laser tracking laser it's basically what you use when you got a agile target that's trying to go above you. Your secondaries a BB gun, submachine gun style BB gun, and where the ball bearings will bounce off a wall or two. They don't hit sudden first, but can be used for finishing things off if your rocket launcher is dry and you need to hit something behind a wall. Derby Disco uh, throws... I forget if it pierces through bots or not. I think it does. And it will also stun them. Fair amount of damage. Shoot the Moon is just boosted speed and jump height for a couple of seconds. And Whirling Dervish is where she goes, Hey, I'm going to turn my uh, roller skate into a weapon. It spins around on one foot, the other foot extended out. Just spinning around. Spin, spin, spin. Basically a melee 
melee attack for as long as uh, she's got juice for it. Now, uh, let's see. Captain's Spark. I think he's got the highest damage potential in the game. Yard Flash can teleport through walls and stuff. So, a lot like uh, Eevee's Blink. Megahertz is a blind and slow, although on bots it's a stun. Basically, sort of a utility ability. Flip switch is a lot like uh, veterans. Uh, pro skill where you leap on top of someone and then drop kicking them away. His primary weapon is an energy sword, which builds up charges from use of skills and striking targets. And when it's fully charged, which is just three charges, he can ult fire to release a burst of energy right in front of him. Usually he used to help finish someone off. That you just uh, grapple with flip switch or something. And then his secondary is a blaster pistol. Pretty straightforward little blast from pistol. Bow, 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 bow. And you can punch things with it too as a grapple. Let's see. I forget if Artemis or Leo came next, but Artemis is a oh shot shoot who does a lot of damage. I think she can get headshots. They you, she's got to draw the bow back first in order to get full damage. I think they always fly straight, regardless of how long you hold it back. So. Not like Shaolin in that case. Routering is definitely piercing. You'll know, you know, try to return to where after it reaches a certain distance so it can strike targets twice. The biological warfare uh, locks out skills of enemy pros. I don't think it does anything to bots. So she's not very useful in Blitz. Irradiates the same kind of thing. It doesn't affect bots it will instead uh, mark a target with radiation and make it so that they can't passively heal until either a healer gives them some healing or I think they grab a regenital. Otherwise all they can do is just run. I mean they can still shoot and stuff but they're gonna be taking very weak chipping damage for quite a while actually. I do not remember what her secondary. Oh, no, her, her secondary is a lot like an SMG. Like a living SMG. Like what you had in Half Life 1. Or sort of like a kneeler in a way. Uh, let's see. Leo is an interesting supporting guy. He cannot do a consistent heal on demand, instead he has to charge up a global heal by doing damage to enemies. And it has a prism effect when his main weapon is the front target, so he's actually extremely efficient at dealing with waves of bots. And once his weapon is fully charged, which is denoted by a rainbow warping around his wrist, he can use his alternate fire to do a strong global heal. I could do a global heal at any time before that, but if it's not fully charged, it's far less effective. Even if it's almost fully charged, it's not. It's only going to be like half as strong as a fully charged shot. And his secondary is a 
three shot ballista crossbow type thing. And he's able to glide. So if he's get some height, he can glide from one place to another a bit easier than most other classes, other than, you know, some of the strikers and commandos. His Venice defense it spits out a rocket every few seconds at a fairly long range actually and any allies near it will slowly gain armor more armor the higher level it is adoration of the ai hijacks an enemy bot and turns it into a bomb and bot code x is a speed and damage boost for allied bots so he belongs mostly in the lane i think that's everyone except for robohobo who is was the last pro to get released Probably gonna be hearing a train. Robo Hobo's on it. No. <laughs> um, his primary weapon is it's like a piercing rocket. It will go through enemy targets until it hits something solid like a wall or a turret. And it has a bit of a sine wave. Ooh, okay, thunderstorm. It's a bit of a sine wave, sine wave effect to it, which can actually make it kind of hard to hit. But it also explodes on impact with the whatever is solid, so you can actually get double hits on some targets. Um, I do not remember what it's. Oh. Fire is right now. In fact, I don't remember what his secondary is either. <laughs> How little I played him. Uh, the Ghetto Blaster is actually what we saw earlier. It's basically a deployable shave ice turret in the same sense it slows whatever is around it and it can be destroyed pretty easily robobots give him some chasing hit scan capability all right now i okay, well his robo robots are chasing hit scan type thing which deploys a few little cassette tapes to chase something down until they either time out or they die and Sound Blast is an awkward mobility slash utility move where he blasts from the speakers on his shoulders in front of him, launching him backwards. But he stuns bots and knocks back enemies, so. It's an offshoot of rocket jumping. And I remembered that his secondary is a little megaphone, which is also a projectile, close range projectile, so it can actually be kind of tricky to hit with. Alright, okay, so yeah, his primary secondary is just instant detonate whatever uh, shots are out already in the air on demand. Makes it a little easier to get double hits on some targets. Is this a hailstorm? It might turn into one. Anyway, I've been sitting in the lobby this whole time. No one has showed up. Well, two people showed up, kind of, but they haven't done anything. The game won't start until there's three on each team, so. Let's see. So, if you can get into the store, 
the, these blue unlock icons in the upper left are the three pros on rotation. They've been this for about six years now. They supposedly had implemented the system to have them cycle around weekly, but they never used it. And obviously, since the servers are shutting down in a week and a half, they never will use it. But I don't know what's up with that. Uh, yeah, they've all got bios to bring up. A, these are what they've been doing. These are why they're in it. What's Carl's? Well, the special reconnaissance cyborgs built by the governing overclass in order to infiltrate outlander society. Directive was to transmit valuable information back to its creators as the outlander survival tactics, whereabouts, leadership structure, as well as photos of outlander when scooting the thing, because why not do that sort of thing in a gun game? So, basically use a spy bot that is very poor at doing fine. <sighs> but, since nobody's on, even though I want to play, no one's on. So, just listen to Robo Hobo's latest hit. And I'll see you all later.